let's talk for a minute, all right? Long time subscribers, short time subscribers, you guys know. I am a Giants fan, right? Today, the Giants, the 0-4 Giants, lost to the 0-4 Chargers, making the Giants 0-5. Uh, for a nice tie with the Browns for being the worst, and the 49ers, can't leave them out, for the worst team in the NFL. Now, you look at the Giants, you say they have the talent, right? Eh, you could make an argument. So what, what's the issue, right? How aren't they winning? How are they the worst team in the NFL? We're tied for it. How are the Jets 3-2? and two? How are the Giants 0-5? Oh and, and what I think it boils down to, um, I think it's a few things. I think you look at one, Ben Crapadoo. Ben McAdoo, whatever you want to say, he's awful. He is the worst head coach in the NFL. I don't want to hear Mike Malarkey. I don't want to hear anybody, right? It's Ben McAdoo. He's horrific, horrendous, deplorable, reprehensible, whatever you want to say. Ben McAdoo fits the description. That greased up, you know, new clown, fake mob boss. Just He's awful. He needs to go. He needs to be fired. Jerry Reese. I could say many things about Jerry Reese. We're going to boil it down to just, you know, two words. He's terrible. Really. He's like, he is the worst general manager in football. He'll take a fifth round draft pick, you know, talent-wise. He's like, second round, mm, it seems about right. Draft him. It doesn't matter who they are. It's awful. Drafting ability has been terrible. You look at the first round picks over the last several years, and they're all, for the most part, horrific aside from Odell Beckham you have Eric Flowers I've talked about Eric Flowers he's a revolving door he's the he's the most polite left tackle in football I, sw I swear dude he'll just let you buy he's just that nice it's I, I, I like I literally don't even have words for how bad it is I mean who's another first round pick Eli Apple Eli Crapple, more like. He's, again, absolutely terrible. I made a video when he got drafted. I'm like, he just doesn't have it. So many Giants fans, and I am a Giants fan. They gave me shit for that. They're like, oh, no, you don't, even, you don't know what you're talking about. Eli Apple's great. Now he's still shitty. His second year in the NFL, absolutely terrible. And people are like, hmm, I guess he's not as good as I thought he was. Yeah, no no kidding. Idiot kid. Awful. They're it, like... Eli Apple is awful. I mean, you look at... I, I mean, I can't even think of any other first-round picks that are really just playmakers on the Giants. I, there just aren't any. It's that bad. It is that bad. You look at second-round picks. I mean, what's the name of the defensive tackle the Giants drafted out of UNC a couple years ago? 2012. Uh, dreadlocks. I can't even remember his name. He's, he's that irrelevant. He went to the Broncos a little bit later on. I want to say Marvin something. Maybe not Marvin. There's an M. I feel like there's a V. I'm going to look this up. All right. It was a 2011 draft. Marvin Austin at UNC. Uh, let's let's go over the Giants draft classes over the past several years. We're going to start with 2011. Um, first round pick, Prince of Mucamara. Never really amounted to much. Super injury prone. Not on the team anymore. That's 2011. That's six years ago. So it is a decent amount of time. Um but it's really, it's really not that far ago. It's like five drafts ago. Second round pick, Marvin Austin. Complete bust. Didn't really play ever off the team. Third round pick, Jarrell Jernigan. He was decent um, for like a season. It was never really that good. Never really played that much. Not on the team anymore. Let's move to 2012. First round pick was David Wilson. Very bad. Um, you know, he got injured. Nothing much you can do. He was actually, you know, decent when he played, but he didn't really play for that long due to injury. Second round pick, Ruben Randall. Longtime subscribers know, I hate Ruben Randall. He's the laziest player in NFL history. Eric Flowers is doing his very best to contend with that, but I think Ruben Randall takes the cake. Completely awful. Second round pick. Third round pick, J. Ron Hosley. Oh, God. J. Ron Hosley was a disaster. Absolute disaster. He played way more than he should have. Uh, and was terrible every single time. 2013, Giants take Justin Pugh, played him at tackle. He was awful at tackle. Then they move him inside the guard, and he's actually a very good offensive guard. Great stuff. 
Round two, Jonathan Hankins. Never really evolved into anything crazy. He was always decent, not on the team anymore. Demontre Moore, third round pick. You know, he was decent um, in terms of ability, besides the fact that he liked to commit penalties every single time he stepped out on the field, whether it was roughing the pass or, I mean, like, offsides, encroachment. Demontre Moore is an absolute idiot. Terrible player. Uh, he's not on the team anymore. He bounces around. 2014, Odell. Praise Jesus for Odell Beckham Jr. Even though he f fractured his ankle and was probably out for the season. But Odell's sick. Round two, Western Richburg. I'm a big fan of Western Richburg. I think he's been decent. Quality center. That's a good pick. Round three, Jay Bromley. He starts now. He's not good. Uh, so that's not great. All three are still on the team, and that was in 2014. So not really that long ago at all. Uh, 2015, Eric Flowers, the worst uh, starter in professional football. Round two, Landon Collins. Giants traded up to get Landon Collins. Landon Collins was actually um, the worst player in the league, maybe, his rookie season. And then last season was phenomenal because the Giants actually decided him to, uh, to play him at strong safety, which is where he should have been playing the entire career. So Landon Collins, you can say that was a good pick, but they used him really poorly at first. Round three, Owamabe Odigazua. Injury prone, never really has done much with the Giants. Uh, I don't. I think the Giants cut him, to be honest, pretty recently. So he's off the team now, and that was what? That was two years ago. Yeah, that was two years ago. 2016, last year. Eli Apple, horrific. Whether he's getting beat over the top or committing penalties, allowing yardage, Eli Apple is awful. Round two, Sterling Shepard, great pick. Sterling Shepard is a great slot receiver, and then round three we have Darian Thompson who's just getting onto the field pretty much for the first time after being injured all last season. But you take a look at those draft picks over the past, you know, five, six years, and they're just awful. Between awful players, like awful, awful players, and I said that word so many times, um, and not even being on the team anymore, you got to contribute a little bit of the Giants sucking to their draft choices over the past several years, doing nothing in free agency up until, you know, signing Olivier Vernon and Janoris Jenkins, who have been fantastic. But um, nevertheless, I've rambled for a while. Point being, Ben McAdoo is a shit show. Jerry Reese is awful. First step to this realistic rebuild is getting rid of Ben McAdoo, taking over the team as general manager, and uh, finally hoping to build this team back into something that can ca contribute and win games. I mean, they need all the help they can get, right? But this is going to be completely realistic. Realistic moves only. I think I've done, so far, just the Rams and the Texans in this realistic rebuild style. And now we're going to New York Giants. You own five New York Giants. And hopefully we can turn around not only their season, but their, their future. Because right now, there really isn't one. All right, so here we are with the team. And uh, remember, this is, you know, realistic moves only. So it's not about, you know, making trades and signing free agents so much as it is taking what you have and trying to progress and build through the draft and somewhat free agency. We're going to be following the rules that we have the entire time. Eli Manning is a New York Giant until he retires, pretty much, or we decide to replace him over time. It's going to be an interesting situation. Receiving core, I mean, we're stuck with Brandon Marshall. We can't, we can't trade him. He's 33. Um, we can't really trade anyone to get better players through that method. So it's pretty much going to uh, come down to... Can we draft decent enough players across all the rounds in the draft, you know, all seven rounds, and, you know, take these free agents that we can find, get for somewhat cheap, and develop them over time. So this is the team that we're going to rock with for season number one. And uh, I assume they're going to start better than 0-5. This is probably a six to nine win team overall, but let's go ahead and simulate um, to the midseason mark and see how we're doing. All right, so we are three and four at the midseason mark, on pace for that six to nine win season that I projected. Looks like Justin Pugh is a free agent. Cowboys are six and one. Eagles four and four. Redskins two and five. Uh, I started Wayne Gallman, by the way. I think that's necessary. I moved him around. Um, I don't think I changed anything else defensively. No, nah, I didn't. Uh, pretty much everything stayed the same. I didn't even touch on how bad this linebacking core is. I like Devon Kennard. But the Giants just don't believe in drafting linebackers ever, or even offensive line. So, I mean, I guess they got Pew and Rich Richburg, but aside from that, nothing. But three and four, got to bring back Justin Pugh, so we're going to do that. And I'll see you guys after I do this. 
All right, so I went ahead and I uh, brought back Justin Pugh, Western Bridgeburg, Ross Cockrell, and Devon Kennard. We're leaving off Jay Bromley and a handful of other players below here. Really have no interest in them. Shane Vereen, he's 28 years old. Not that that's incredibly old, but it is getting there for a running back. We do have Paul Perkins. We do have Wayne Gallman. I'm looking to potentially draft a running back, depending on what pick we have here, because remember, we do use real draft picks for this part of the series. He's realistic rebuild. So if Saquon Barkley's on the board, do we go ahead and draft him? Uh, Orleans Darkwa is solid, but at this current moment in time, I really don't want to bring him back. So we're going to go ahead here and um, simulate to the playoffs, which I assume we're going to miss, and I hope we do. I want a high draft pick. Give me, give me a reason to take Saquon Barkley. So we missed out on the playoffs, clearly. Somewhat disappointing. I don't really care, though. We went 6-10, and 10, tied for a worst in the NFC East. We'll check out the stats, see how this season happened. Eli Manning was particularly average, you know, less than 4,000 yards, uh, 21 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. It sounded almost like I said 400,000 there. I did not. Oh, Wayne Goldman averaged 2.8 yards per carry. Doing absolute bits for us. Sterling Shepard, 80 catches for 800 yards, 5 touchdowns. Brandon Marshall had 8 catches, nearly 1,000 yards. Adele had over 1,000 yards, almost no touchdowns, though only 3 for him. It's amazing we won 6 games. Eric Flowers went up 29 sacks. For those of you who aren't particularly good at math like myself, uh, that's nearly 2 a game. So that's fairly horrific. Eric Flowers is a disaster. BJ Goodson led our team at tackles with 130. Tackles for loss went to Damon Harrison with 22. Quarterback sacks, 10.5 for Olivier Vernon. Dalvin Tomlinson and JPP both had 8 apiece. Interceptions, 3 for Lennon Collins and Janoris Jenkins. Forced fumbles, I see 2 for a handful of players. Lennon Collins, Janoris Jenkins, DRC, Devon Kennard. I see at least one defensive touchdown. We get 2, Jack Rabbit and Darian Thompson. Yearly awards, no Eli Manning for MVP. That's a shocker. Goes to Aaron Rodgers. Um... I could have made a shocker joke there, uh, but I decided not to. That's if you guys, okay. Offense player of the year goes to Aaron Rodgers. No Giants in there. Defense player of the year goes to Clay Matthews. What is this, 2012? No Giants. Offense Ricky. Ooh, hold on. Kyle Fuller's on the Packers. How in the world did that happen? Looks like a trade happened. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Dalvin Cook. Wayne Gallman actually at number four, averaging 2.8 yards per carry. And then defensive rookie of the year goes to Jared Davis, as it seems like it does every single time. Dalvin Tomlinson in the top 10, though. I'll take it. You know what? I'm actually going to uh, I'm actually going to sign Orlean Starkwa, hopefully to a two-year deal. Um, I think it's a fair offer. He's going to test out free agency. That's okay. I plan on potentially going after a running back in the draft. Although I haven't looked at scouting at all. I turned on auto scouting so I wouldn't have to be bothered with it during a simulation. But we're in the offseason. I doubt there are going to be any interesting free agents, but we might as well check it out. Drew Brees is there like he is every time. Telvin Smith is here. That's actually super intriguing. I need Telvin Smith, I've decided. He fits the scheme so, so well. We have no players currently at the position. We let JT Thomas go. Uh, I guess we probably let Jonathan Casillas go. We need Telvin Smith, 100%. That's actually a sick player to have here. All right, Telvin Smith accepted, and he is the newest New York Giant. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, JT Thomas is a former Jaguar, and the Giants signed him to play outside linebacker. He never really did much. And now Telvin Smith, Jaguar's outside linebacker, his next team is also the Giants. Hopefully his career works out a little bit better in New York than JT Thomas's did. All right, so we also went and signed Alvin Bailey and Alex Anzalone in free agency. I don't know why Anzalone was there. Besides being injured in real life, um, he's really young. I think he's going to fit into the team well as good depth. He probably won't get much playing time, but he's a decent player. And his real issue has been uh, injury over his career. And since injuries are off, we won't really have to worry about that at all. And I thought Alvin Bailey would just be an upgrade to Josh Jerry or Jessamine Dunker. So we might... We'll probably go out and draft some players. Okay, I don't know how this hasn't happened already. Eric Flowers needs to go. He's gone. See you later. Chad Wheeler, it's your time to shine. All right, so in these realistic rebuilds, we're going to do what we usually do in the draft so you guys don't see the players, like, actual name in the game so we can change them afterwards. I won't change any of the stats because that's, like, not fun. So I'm going to do the draft and get back to you guys with the draft class. Uh, we do have the fifth pick, though. I think that's necessary to tell you guys. I'll show you my picks. Um, we have the fifth-round pick. 
or excuse me, the fifth overall pick in every round. So there you go. So we obviously aren't completely restricted from doing trades. We're trading down in the draft 10 picks uh, with the Denver Broncos. We are also acquiring a third rounder this year and a second rounder next year. And all we had to give up to get that was a fifth uh, this year and a seventh. So we still have our sixth round pick. We've just added another third to th this year. Uh, traded down 10 spots and picked up a second next year. All in all, I think it was a pretty good trade. There was no one really in this range that I thought was worth that pick. Um, but yeah, you guys are going to see at the end who we end up taking. All right, guys. So I want to be honest. We had one of the best draft classes I've ever had in a lot of ways. And as you can see, our first round pick, Saquon Barkley out of Penn State. He was actually an 82 overall, ranked number two in the entire class. We took him at 15 after the trade down. Uh, I really wanted to take a running back. There were three on the board that were on my radar. And we ended up taking, you know, Saquon Barkley. Um, changed his height and weight to be, you know, specific to him. Obviously, he didn't touch the stats. He only had normal development, unfortunately. But that overall is so high, it doesn't really matter. In the second round, though, we took Billy Price, an offensive guard out of Ohio State. We might move him around the offensive line. We were lucky enough to get him with quick development, 92 strength, 76 run block, 79 pass block, but 89 impact blocking. So that was a really good pick. Followed up in the third round by Will Clapp out of LSU. Superstar development. 90 strength, 77 run block, 81 pass block, 85 impact blocking. Insane player. Superstar development. Absolutely love it. He's going to come in and start immediately. We can't not with that development. In the third round, we'd go ahead and take Riley Ferguson, a quarterback out of Memphis. And he had quick development. I swear it was just development, 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 development. We just kept hitting the development lottery. Um, now, he's not all that good. He only had B-plus throw power, which I didn't really like, and I usually never draft those players, but he was a fifth-round projected player. We took him in the third round. I thought he was decent enough. And he has 87 speed. I didn't even realize that. He is fast as hell. 87 throw power, 88 throw on the run. So he could come in, honestly, and and pretty much start immediately. We're going to go with Eli for another season, though, for the sake of realism, but great pick from Riley Ferguson. Followed it up with Cole Reyes out of North Dakota. Normal development, but he has 87 speed, 84 zone coverage, 93 excel, 87 hit power. He's really, really good. You wish that speed was a bit better. He kind of seems like almost a Darian Thompson 2.0, but Cole Reyes out of North Dakota was our next pick, and then we followed it up with Jacob Pugh out of Florida State. 70 overall, not a terrible six round pick. He's just nothing special. He's a 3 4 player, and we took him into our 4 3, but amazing draft class overall. Saquon Barkley to the New York Giants. I'm hype. This is the way the, uh, the new team looks right now. I'm going to change some positions around so we get some of our rookies starting. I think Will Clapp, our superstar development player, is going to go in and play left tackle. So, um, yeah, Will Clapp, left tackle. And he is at left tackle, a 77 overall. So the offensive line actually is much improved. I guess we can probably. I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play Billy Price at right tackle. I think that quick development is gonna do a lot for him, and I think he's gonna be fine out there. We're gonna have Alvin Bailey on the inside, and huge, huge draft for us in terms of offensive line. He's an he's a 78 at right tackle. I'll take it. Team is very much improved. Saquon Barkley is a huge player. I hope he makes plays behind this newly revamped offensive line. Cole Reyes is going to start at free safety, maybe. I don't actually know for sure. Telvin Smith. We got ourselves a decent team. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these guys and then show you the roster for the start of season number two. So this is the upgraded team. Eli Manning didn't even have anything I could upgrade, really. But uh, this is it, in case you were curious. I think it looks pretty good. Could be worse. Could be better. But overall, for season number two, I think it's much improved. Telvin Smith just has confidence out of nowhere. I guess he's real pumped for the season. Right, sorry to let you down. It's not going to go well. But uh, decent-looking team. I think ooh, I think we're in store for, for a good record. Nothing crazy. Let's go ahead and simulate to the next week and then midseason mark, which is where I'll catch you in a while. I'm going to go grab food. But you guys really didn't need to know that, I guess. All right, so just spent some of my coach XP. I see that Odell's a free agent. We're 4-4, four and four, which is improved. Saquon Barkley, I need to win Rookie of the Year. I need his development to go up so he can be an absolute beast. That would be phenomenal. But we are 4-4. Four and four. Currently, I guess <laughs> we are either one game out of first place or half a game out of first place and, and a game behind, or excuse me, out of last place. It's a very odd spot. The NFC East is very odd right now. Uh, but a lot of XP. Look at 8K for Billy Price and almost 10K 
for Will Clap. That superstar development was so clutch. I don't really know how they had it, to be honest. Um, I didn't find any drafts to her, so I just, we just, you know, got lucky. But uh, that's the XP situation. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We got to bring back Odell. I said I was going out to get food. I haven't yet. It's been, like, honestly a minute since I said that, and I just haven't wanted to. Well, I mean, I want it, but, like, you got to rebuild. Come on, like, priorities, right? Odell is going to get signed to a massive contract. I'm comfortable giving him that. All right, and then we got to bring back the rest of these. Not the rest, but... Like, give me Aldrich Rosas. Mm, fine. Give me Romeo Aquara. Give me B Marsh. Give me DR. Nah, that doesn't even give me B Marsh. Give me, give me DRC and Lana Collins, too. DRC is down to 76 zone coverage. Check this out. I mean, it's going to show regression, right? No, it doesn't even. Okay. So it didn't show regression. It showed that awful voice, whatever just happened. I'm going to give him a decent offer. It's a pretty good deal for one year. He's coming back. And then Brandon Marshall. Just is essentially valueless to me right now. Romeo Aquara can sign a decent deal. I'm comfortable offering him that. He's back. And then Aldrich Rosas, 55 awareness. I'm in. He's horrific. He's, he's really wishy-washy. That's, you know, our re-signs, though. Got some scouting to do. I'm going to do this scouting, then I'm going to automate it. And I'll see you guys for the playoffs, which there's a chance we make. We actually made the playoffs. We went 10-6. and six. I don't know how that happened. All right. Um, I'll show you. I know Jerome does this sometimes. Uh, he shows the team schedule to make sure we didn't cheat, which, again, there's no reason for me to. It's just, like, it takes all the fun out of it. But we went 10-6. and six. There you go. No force wins. Don't even care how that happened. Show me stats. Show me Saquon Barkley, Rookie of the Year. That'd be amazing. Eli Manning, though, 4,100 yards, passing 30 touchdowns, only seven interceptions, rushing Saquon Barkley. Decent 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns, only 3.9 yards per carry, though. like to see that above 4. Paul Perkins had pretty similar numbers, except for attempts and yards. Receiving Odell, not over 1,000 yards. Certainly Shepard is, though. B. Marsh was somewhat close. Evan Ingram led our team in touchdowns with 7. Quarterback sacks allowed 25 from rookie Will Clapp. New Eric Flowers. B.J. Goodson led our team in tackles with 130. Tackles for loss would be 13 from Damon Harrison. Quarterback sacks. Why bother getting any? We had a decent bit, just no one in double digits, which is unfortunate. Interception, seven from Jack Rabbit, six from Telvin Smith, five from Landon Collins, and then one from a handful of other players, including rookie Cole Reyes, who actually did end up starting. Force fumbles, three for B.J. Goodson and Delvin Tomlinson. Fumble recoveries, two from B.J. Goodson, led the team, and then defensive touchdowns. We don't have any. Show me awards now, please, Saquon Barkley. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP in back-to-back -back years. The 11 and 5 Packers, no Giants, obviously, but NFC Offensive Player of the Year, also Aaron Rodgers. Eli Manning at six. Defensive Player of the Year, Clay Matthews in back to back seasons. Moment of Truth, Offensive Rookie of the Year, show me Saquon Barkley, it is. Let's go. 10 and 6 for Saquon. I obviously wasn't going to edit like all the names of every other rookie drafted. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Pierre Price, Cole Reyes at number three. Huge for Saquon Barkley winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, though. I hope he got upgraded to Quick Development, although I somewhat doubt it. Nope, normal development still. He gets a ton of XP, but no development boost, which is is upsetting. Decent amount of XP all over the place. So I will be using that to upgrade the squad. And then I will see you guys for this wildcard playoff game. I can't believe we're in the playoffs already. Maybe, you know, Eli's not even that bad. Eli's the guy. All right, so this is the upgraded team for the playoffs. Saquon Barkley is up to an 89 overall. He got upgraded a lot um, with his skill progression. Still, unfortunately, why do you not have quick development? If you're winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. Offensive line's coming along nicely. Clap and Price are both up to an 82 overall. The entire offensive line's almost above 80, with the exception of Alan Bailey. Receiving core needs work. I mean, Brandon Marshall is obviously not the answer. Telvin Smith is not playing with confidence anymore, but Janoris Jenkins up to a 91. Cole Ray is up to a 79. Man, JPP is dropping off the face of the earth here. He was like an 86, I want to say, to start this off, and he's regressing. Uh, I guess you really can't see it, but he's regressed. Anyway, we have a matchup against the Rams. I'm just going to go ahead and simulate it here. Can we beat the Rams in the wild card? It's going to look like... Yes, and now we face the Panthers in the divisional playoff. I'm going to use some of my coach XP real quick. You guys can see what I spent it on. It's going to be player progression. 
and it's going to be uh, it's going to be the defensive backs. That's what we're going to spend it on right now. And now let's go ahead and simulate this divisional matchup against the Carolina Panthers. It reminds me of like the mid 2000s when the Giants seen a matchup against the Panthers quite a lot, but going to lose 31-13. Unfortunately, that's in the lower left. Uh, you guys can probably see that a little bit. So that was an unfortunate loss, but we you know got the wild card spot, won our wild card game, and unfortunately could not beat the Panthers. But now we're headed to an off season, and uh, off season where a lot of questions need to be answered. Like, is Eli Manning our future starting quarterback? You know, what do we do in the draft? Do we bring back Brandon Marshall? Uh, the answer to that one is no. We do not bring back Brandon Marshall. Now we don't have a ton of money. Bringing in Joe Thomas would have made sense last year, but there's no reason to do that this year after our draft picks. And, um, you know, maybe you could make an argument for Juwan James, either play him at right tackle or slide him inside or slide out or slide in our right tackle um, to put, currently play right guard. We're looking for a receiver. We're in the market for one. Devin Funches could be that guy. Uh, we'll offer him a deal. All right, so I lowballed Trey Waynes, and I offered on Devin Funches, and both actually accepted, which is interesting. Devin Funches is a huge addition to the team. 6'4", only 25 years old, has great overall stats across the board. And um, if you look on the defensive side of the ball, Trey Waynes is an 80 overall, and he has quick development. He's fast. There's room to improve here. And with that quick development, maybe he's finally going to get the chance to do so. I, I, I lowballed him. I had 68 total points on my offer. But he came in and he signed anyway. So, I mean, that's that's a huge player to get, I think. So here we are in the draft. We actually don't really have that high of a pick due to the fact that we somehow made the playoffs, which is unfortunate because there's a player that I'd really like to snag near the top of the board that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. But regardless, you guys are going to see the results after the draft. All right, so we actually made another draft trade. Moving up from 26 to number 7. In the process, we are losing one of our two second-round picks this year and a second-rounder next year. So this is a very big trade-up. I hope it pays off. I think that it will if our player is still on the board. So um, in case you were wondering, he went number 6. Nice. Also, I'm trading down my first-round pick uh, for a first-rounder next year. I'm going to do that with, actually, let's do it with the Saints. A lot of trading in this video, even though it is realistic, but, you know, I guess we're taking the Patriots mantra, which is pretty much just trade down all the time, you know, other than actually trading up to, to start this draft. For a player that uh, we couldn't even get. Colts are offering me a 20 20 second round pick for my third, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. There's no one really in this range that I want to draft, so I'm, you know, not going to draft them. Might as well just take the value. I'm, I'm pressing down in that A, and it's just not doing it, dude. There we go. All right, so the only prospect I bothered changing in this draft class was Sam Darnold out of USC. We're going to assume that he stays another year at USC to refine his abilities, which are a little bit shaky right now despite all the hype he's getting. He did have superstar development. I didn't see the cornerback that I wanted. Therefore, I ended up taking the quarterback instead of the cornerback. Superstar development. It paid off. Do we start Sam Darnold right away? Or do we say, you know what, Eli, thank you for your service. You're going to be second fiddle to Sam Darnold now. You're going to coach him up essentially from the sidelines until you retire. Is that the move? You'll soon find out. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do yet. In case you're wondering, this is the player that I wanted though. Didn't bother changing his name even for this quick little storyline because it's just, you know, real quick. But uh, he's pretty good. Just like his development is quick. Now, I know you could take a slight dig at me and say, hey, would the Giants really draft quarterbacks in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back years? But you got to think about it this way. Davis Webb was a third round pick, never really um, turned into all that much, you know, in this rebuild. He was behind Eli Manning, never got the chance. And then we took a quarterback, another third round pick the following year to kind of be the same thing that we expected maybe Davis Webb would turn into. Eli Manning still played, and they were like, all right, Eli Manning is kind of on his last leg. He's 38 years old. We're going to draft his successor in the first round while we have it. An Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre situation. And um, Eli Manning is going to be our starting quarterback for this season. I don't think we have anyone to really upgrade too much. Not a ton of points, but this is going to be the team for season number three. Let's go ahead and advance to the next week and then advance to the midseason. And uh, hopefully this team can get the job done. See you there. So we're actually 5-2 and two at the midseason mark. Um, Trey Wingo seems to think Eli Manning is a beast. But uh, Eli Manning, 
10,000 XP to work with. That, is that a player of the week? Is that a player of the week? It is. Ton of XP for that. Jeez. Um, but I saw he was regressing a little bit. Check this out. If it's still here. There it is. Look at, look at the getting older during the Super Bowl week. Everything just minus, minus, minus. Throw power especially, but like mainly it's ball carrier moves. His accuracy is not going down with 86 throw power. This could be Eli's final year. Sam Darnold is getting the XP. On what planet? Why? Where did he get all this XP from? Oh, just training. I mean, I'll take it. I will take that all day. I didn't even realize. And preseason. I will, t I will take that. That's a ton of XP for someone not even playing. He's going to be a beast when he takes over the starting job next season. But I'm excited, man. We have a shot at the playoffs. We got to re-sign Sterling Shepard. That's a top priority. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Get that out of the way. All right, so we go ahead and re-sign Sterling Shepard, Paul Perkins, BJ Goodson, and Brad Wing. Eli Apple can walk. Good riddance. Eli Manning, you served us well. Two-time Super Bowl MVP and champion. But um, contract's up. We're going with the fresh face, the new guy in town. Sam Darnold is our new starting quarterback. DRC, again, you served us well. You're too old. And uh, 74 zone coverage is not going to cut it. Appreciate everything you've done, but you are off the team. Darian Thompson, Andrew Adams, I really don't have any interest in at this current moment. Um, let's do some scouting, I guess. And I will see you guys at the playoffs. All right, so we made the playoffs again going 11-5. and five. I love to see it. I really do. Uh, we did not win our division. We grabbed the wild card spot, obviously, as we were in the wild card playoff against the Detroit Lions. We'll check out the stats, see how we got here. Eli Manning, 4,500 yards, 32 touchdowns, still 14 interceptions is pretty high. Saquon Barkley had a really great season, nearly 1,400 yards on the ground, averaged 4.3 yards per carry with 13 touchdowns. Odell, huge season, nearly 1,500 yards receiving on 86 catches, 11 touchdowns, seven punches over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns in his first season uh, with the Giants. So that is good to see. Quarterback sacks are still really, really high because this game is broken. B.J. Goodson uh, had 120 127 tackles that led our team. It also tied with Telvin Smith. Damon Harrison had 12 tackles for loss and 10 quarterback sacks. Olivier Vernon led our team with 15. That's actually insane from Damon Harrison, though. INTs, four from Janoris, four from Trey Waynes, three from Telvin Smith. You love to see Trey Waynes come in and grab four picks. Force fumbles, you have two from B.J. Goodson, Olivier Vernon, and Eli Apple. Fumble recoveries, one from B.J. Goodson and Eli Apple apiece. One safety from Olivier Vernon, then the one defensive touchdown from the Jack Rabbit himself. Awards, I might see Eli Manning up here. Phillip Rivers gets the league MVP. Um, I don't see any Eli Manning, unfortunate. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley. Love to see a running back in there over a quarterback. Defensive player of the year goes to B-Wags. Ooh, one giant, Olivier Vernon. Offensive rookie of the year goes to, you know, Sani Low. Sani Low, doesn't matter. Defensive rookie of the year, Takai McCleskey. Those are conflicting names. Origins, I guess. But we do have some XP to use, so we're going to go ahead and uh, use some of that. No one really has a particularly astounding amount of XP, other than I guess you could make an argument for Saquon Barkley, who has 13K, and I guess Eli has 16 Odell is 15. All right, we get a decent amount. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sam Darnold. I'm just going to go to upgrade all to save some time. Sam Darnold is 18K XP. He's an absolute monster. Love to see. I just put all that deep accuracy. I don't know why. He's an 82 overall headed into uh, his second season, his first season starting. He's not obviously going to play during the playoffs. We're not just going to say, hey, Sam Darnold, you're a higher overall now out of nowhere. You're the starting quarterback now for the playoffs. Now we're going to stick with Eli Manning. This is the upgraded team, though. I need a better right guard. That's where I need to target. Saquon Barkley up to a 92. Odell so we're rocking a 99. Defensively, uh, things are coming along pretty nicely. I'm looking to get a better linebacker and maybe an upgrade on the defensive line in the secondary at cornerback. But things overall look pretty good. Let's go ahead and advance the week. See if we can beat the Detroit Lions. I saw the XP jump up. I don't know if that's the end of the season. And it is. Unfortunate. Good to see the Patriots back on top, destroying the Seahawks with Dalton Orenberger. <sighs> All right. Wow, there are some decent free agents. Jalen Ramsey would be a great addition to the team. Deion Jones would be as well. Chris Harris. Here's the problem. We don't have the money for it. Miles Jack, even. We just don't have any money. 2.34 million cap room. We can't get anybody. 
We're gonna go ahead and release Ross Cockrell though. His 2020 sal cap hit is 7.2 mil. So I'm comfortable cutting him. The penalty really isn't all that much. Wait, can I not cut him? Why not? No, oh, okay. Never mind. I'm gonna go ahead and cut Alex Anzalone as well. Decent penalty attached to that, but I'm okay with it. Also gonna cut Romeo Aquara. We're gonna have a little bit more spending money. Okay, so we made a big splash in free agency, signing the top player in the class, Jalen Ramsey. Super young cornerback, gonna be a great addition. Now we have an awesome trio of corners and Trey Wayne, Jalen Ramsey, and the Jack Rabbit himself. We're kind of low on players overall um, at some of our positions, but um, I don't know. It looks like a decent enough lineup. Super excited for Sam Darnold to take the reins. Hopefully, you know he can take the Giants back to the playoffs as we've made them each of the last two seasons. But yeah, I have like I have no money. Not money. I, yeah. Well, I guess I have no sal cap room. All right, so here we are in the draft. I'm actually going to try and execute a trade-up. I have the 16th pick and the 23rd pick. We're going to see if we can make a big move. Never mind, he went number one overall. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to be honest, there's no one in the draft that really even looks good at a position of need. I'm not even going to bother changing the names of the players at this point because it's like pretty far into the future. So the players in this draft class would be like true freshmen in college right now. Um, so like, we're not even here yet. It's kind of a weird thing, but like there's no one that I have any interest in at all. So I'm just gonna pretty much just take guesses. Need an upgrade on the offensive line. Richie Reeves looks really good from his combine. He's a 77 overall, like nothing astounding. With this pick, I'm gonna take Gilbert Hunter out of Texas. He's, his last name is my first name. Went to Texas, hook him horns. Looks like a really, really good player. Fits a 3-4 scheme. I'm going to take him anyway. He is 76 overall. Eh, he's not great. With this pick, I'm taking Sean Winters out of Florida A&M. Third round guy. Talent is mid-2. I'm taking him at the top of the second round. He looks really, really insane. Going to be a great fourth corner. 76 overall. Quick development. I'll take you. Good fourth option for us. But uh, I have no interest in the rest of this draft. We're just going to simulate. hope the CPU drops us a stud offensive lineman. They didn't draft us a stud offensive lineman, but they after, uh, drafted us Gordon Muhort, who's a 75 overall, in the fifth round. Not too shabby. The rest of the picks were, yeah, they were decent for me, so I'll take it. All right, so here is a team for season number four, I want to say. Season number three. You guys know where it is. I have no idea. Can't be bothered to do the math. I think, math, I think this is the uh, third season. Sam Darnold is now the starting quarterback for the New York Giants. We have Saquon Barkley. We have a number of really good players on this team. If you check out the defense, undoubtedly the linebacking core is the weakest part of the team, but we're going to have to be uh, forced to rock with it. I thought Evan Engram would be a higher overall by now, but he is not. Uh, Reeves is going to start over Bailey, and I guess this is going to be the roster for the first simulation up to the midseason mark. Here we go. Come on, Sammy boy. All right, under the guiding hand of Sam Darnold, no pun intended, maybe because he guiding arm, whatever, and Saquon Barkley. We are 5-2 and two at the midseason mark, currently in the lead in the NFC East, doing pretty well. Janoris Jenkins, the Jack Rabbit, is a free agent. We're okay, though. Um, guys are playing pretty well. I'm okay with it. I like it. Love to see it. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this team and uh, see you guys for the playoffs. I'm going to address Janoris Jenkins at the end. This could be the final season. I don't know. All right, so we did make the playoffs. Only nine and seven, though. Pretty, pretty unfortunate. We won the division, but like you know, it's nothing really to be too proud of. Sam Darnold, kind of a rough rookie season. Or I guess he's not a rookie anymore. Kind of a tough first starting season. Forty-one hundred yards, twenty-four touchdowns, fourteen interceptions. Rushing Saquon Barkley, doing Saquon Barkley type things. Nearly thirteen hundred yards, thirteen touchdowns. No fumbles on the year. Love to see it. Receiving. Only one receiver over 1,000 yards in Odell. Uh, Devin Funches led our team in touchdowns. You know, balls being distributed well, but not a whole lot of uh, touchdowns for one individual player. Defensively, B.J. Goodson led our team in tackles, 138. Tackles for loss would be 12 from Damon Harrison. And then quarterback sacks, we have 9 and the 8 and 8 from O.V., Damon Harrison, and J.P.P. Interceptions, we have 4 from Landon Collins, 2 from a litany of players. And by litany, I mean 3. Forced fumbles, we have three from Telvin Smith, led the team. And then defensive touchdowns, I only see one from Cole Reyes. Awards, I doubt we're going to be in here in any capacity. I don't see any Giants, NFC Office Player of the Year, 
Uh, no Giants Defensive Player of the Year. No Giants Offensive Rookie of the Year. Ooh, one Giant, Gordon Muir, the wide receiver. And then we have Sean Winters, the cornerback, at number four um, for Defensive Rookie of the Year. All right, so we upgraded the team. No big major upgrades, though, unfortunately. Hopefully, it should be enough to get out of the wild card matchup with the Falcons. And I think we'll do one more season after this to see the way Sam Darnold will develop as he can't win his first ever playoff matchup. Unfortunate. All right, so we have a number of really, really big free agents, all the way from Janoris Jenkins down to about Jason Pierre-Paul. And I kind of want to bring back all of them, with maybe the exception of JPP, who's 32 and not getting any better. Clearly, 69 block shed. Okay, so Janoris Jenkins just, you know, declined my offer. We're going to franchise tag him. We have last chance offer on way more players than I thought. So, I mean, I don't even know how we're going to bring them all back. The answer is big contracts. We have a ton of cap room now that Eli's gone and a number of other players are gone. So we should be able to re-sign everyone that we want to. Damon Harrison going to free agency. We can't re-sign him. All these guys that got one-year deals, um, they just weren't interested in re-signing. But it's like, you guys are 30-something years old. JPP, I mean, I'm going to let you test free agency at this point. We're going to see if there are better players there. Because uh, our defensive line's taken a small hit with Damon Harris and JPP both leaving. We need to sign some other players. We have 37.38 mil uh, to get it done. Justin Houston, I'm in. Solomon Thomas, I'm even more in. We brought back Damon Harrison on a one-year deal and Justin Houston on a two-year deal with hopes of enticing him to win a championship under this New York Giant team. It's good enough to do so. Now it's time to come out and play. Hopefully the Giants can get it done. Didn't address linebacker really. To, who are you? Hold on. Gilbert Hunter, the guy we drafted at Texas up to an 80 overall, even though he fits the scheme um, in no ways. I'm not complaining, though. It's a decent team. Look at Justin Houston, 97 overall there on the defensive line. Love to see it. We're going to simulate to the draft. I have no desire to use any of my picks. I'm just going to take random shots in the dark and, you know, hope we strike oil. Striking gold might be better. Balanced. Oh, he's sick. Sick combine. Cortez Foster. Slow development. Love it. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and stop the draft. See you guys for the start of the next... Uh, I'll try to say next and last of the same word. Didn't work out. I'll see you for the next and final season. All right, this is the team for the final season. Could be worse. Also could be much better. Well, I mean, in the realistic fashion, it's harder to get sick teams. But this is the team we're rocking with. Hopefully we can do well. I'm going to go ahead and spend this team XP and see you guys... At the midseason mark, I expect big things. It can be five wins again. That's big, right? All right, so we do have five wins. It's about where I expected us to be. I would hope we'd be there. I need to spend some coach XP. I don't even know what I can spend it on, really. Pretty much got in every position that I can. But I'm going to spend that. I'm going to upgrade the team. You guys are going to see the upgraded team, and then I'll see you for the playoffs. This is the upgraded team. Nothing too crazy. Certainly Shepard's uh, now at 90 overall. Sam Darnold is closing in. But, uh, ooh. Hunter on the defense, Gilbert Hunter, up to an 83 overall. I'll take it. Simulate to the playoffs. All right, so we finished going 12 and four. Uh, I haven't seen any XP. We still didn't even win the, the division. Sam Darnold, 4,200 yards, 34 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Everyone just tosses tons of picks. Saquon Barkley, six season, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, only one fumble, receiving Odell, doing Odell things, over 100 yards, nearly 1,400, excuse me, over 100 catches. Well, I guess he did have over 100 yards, but almost 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns. Evan Ingram had eight touchdowns. Blocking is a joke always, but the sacks are down big time. Defensively, B.J. Goodson, 126. Tackles led the team. Tackles for loss, 11 from Dalvin Tomlinson. Quarterback sacks, 16 and a half from Jay Hugh. Nine and a half from Dalvin Tomlinson. Eight from OV, seven and a half from Damon Harrison. Interceptions, eight from Jalen Ramsey, four apiece for Landon Collins and the Jack Rabbit, two from BJ Goodson. Defensive touchdowns, I see one. It's Cole Reyes in back to back years. Yearly awards, show me MVP. Dak gets MVP. Slap in the face. Sam Darnold finishes in the top 10, though. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Sam Darnold and Saquon Barkley finish in the top 10. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Hassan Reddick out of Temple. New, uh, Cardinals first round draft pick. Jay Hugh finishes at number four. BJ Goodson at number seven. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Harris Turner. No Giants. Defensive rookie of the year, Dwayne Baldwin. Number seven. All right. But we are in a position 
to do well here. 12 and four against the Green Bay Packers. Show me a win and then show me the Cowboys in the divisional. Exactly what I wanted. Here we go to the conference championship. Can we get the job done? We do. Now we're facing the Saints in the conference championship. I'm gonna use some XP. That's probably a good decision. I didn't use any. We're gonna use some XP. Will clap, 37K. That's a Pro Bowl appearance. That's a Pro Bowl, guarantee you. Pro Bowl appearance, there we go. I'm gonna use some of this XP, get this team upgraded a bit, and then see you guys for this playoff matchup. Here's the upgraded team. Saquon Barkley, 97 overall. Look at Will Clapp, 95. Billy Price, 90. I mean, this team is insane. It's getting that way. At least Sam Darnold playing up to a 92 overall. Defensively, uh, things are moving in the right direction. Look at the cornerbacks. Cornerbacks are sick, to be honest. Defensive line is pretty nasty. Can we go to the Super Bowl? Sam Darnold, lead us to victory, please. Yes, against the Raiders in the Super Bowl. We're jumping in. Actually, I'm going to upgrade in case we have any upgrade points. We're at 93 overall. That's not bad. It was a good thing I checked. We have some XP. I'm in. All right, no one really went up in overall, but here we go. In Arizona. Thank you for whoever just subscribed. It means a lot to me. It really actually does. But here we go. Into the Super Bowl against the Oakland Raiders. Come on, Sam. All right, show me something here. Can we win the Super Bowl? Off to a hot start. 7-3, now down 9-7, but we're going to score quickly and then miss the extra point per usual. Up 20-9 here, coming up close to halftime. Now 26-9 in the second half, 29-9. It is looking good for the New York Giants, led by Saquon Barkley and Sam Darnold. All we have to do is ice it, and this game is all but over. 43-18 is your final score as we win a Super Bowl in this realistic Rebo. That is exciting to see. I'm a big fan of that. No complaints. Sam Darnold... Saquon Barkley, I mean, this team was led by our rookies for real. Sam Darnold came up pretty quickly. Saquon Barkley is an absolute beast in real life, and he was an absolute beast in the game as well. I'm excited to see who this uh, Super Bowl MVP was as Derek Carr hangs his head after his, I would, I would assume, first Super Bowl and first Super Bowl loss at that. But guys, I think that's going to do it for the game here. Can you show me who Super Bowl MVP is? I'm stalling enough, right? It's going to Jalen Ramsey. Five tackles, his Super Bowl MVP. Hold on. Hold on here just a moment. Sam Darnold's going to throw for 243 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions with 146.6 out of 158.3 quarterback rating. He's not going to win Super Bowl MVP. Saquon Barkley's going to rush for 148 yards and a touchdown. He's not going to win MVP. It's rigged, man. It's rigged, but thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. This was actually a lot of fun to rebuild my favorite team in this realistic manner. Even though the Giants probably won't end up getting Saquon and Sam Darnold. It is what it is. This is the way it happened to work out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. This shit don't run well.